Hey everybody, welcome back to Brainiac Baseball's 1969 Seattle Pilots What Is Scenario. Today's matchup features the Minnesota Twins versus the Seattle Pilots at Six Stadium. On the mound for the Twins today is Dick Estelle, whose record is 2-2 two two with a 5.05 ERA. And pitching for the Pilots today is Marty Patton, whose record is 6-8 with a 4.25 ERA. Okay, so <laughs> we barely hung on and won yesterday, 8-7. to seven. If you watched that game, you saw me have like a mental breakdown in the ninth inning. Uh, Tommy Agee hit two home runs. We were cruising along. We were winning 8-1. to one, And then everything fell apart uh, in the ninth inning. We had three errors. We committed three errors. Uh, and... It looked like the game was just going to give it away. Like, there was nothing we could do. We had all of our best players in. We made all the right defensive calls. We had Mike Marshall into the ball game um, in a non-save situation to close the ball game out, and the defense completely fell apart. So I have no idea, you know, how to you know, combat that when that happens other than to let it play out, and the game will decide when enough's enough. And fortunately, it decided uh, right before uh, the Twins tied up the ball game. So uh, they had runners at first and third, and I think we ended up pop out, and uh, we escaped with the victory. So we move on to game two of the three-game series against the Twins. Let's go ahead and get started. As always, I appreciate everyone following along, like, and or subscribe to the channel. I did do a baseball card video today, a quick hits. Uh, for some 2022 Tops Series 2. Uh, so stay tuned for that. It should be available later on today. Marty P uh, Patton is on the mound. It's time for a Marty party. The current Twins are batting 261 against so It's 100 plate appearances, so that's a significant amount. We are down two pitchers today, though, which I did not realize. Uh, Ron Locke is unavailable, and Mike Marshall, who gave up Five runs in the ninth inning, but they were all unearned. Uh, neither one of those guys are available. Our lineup is the same as yesterday uh, because we are facing another lefty. And uh, if it's not broke, don't try to fix it. We scored eight runs, and Tommy Agee had a double dog day. He's got 15 home runs now. It's amazing. Um, and really, everybody in our lineup had two hits, with the exception of Jerry McNurtney, who went hitless. And I'm starting to think now that as his... Uh, Batting average has dipped down to around 240, and his on-base percentage is below 300. We may have reached the peak and uh, are on the decline with Jerry McNurtney for this season. And uh, we do have Jerry May in Triple A. Maybe it's time to bring him up. He's batting 341 down there, um, and we might just have to move McNurtney to the bench. Something to think about, anyway. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the lineup rundown for the Minnesota Twins. They have the same lineup as yesterday. Batting leadoff, playing left field, is Mike Adams. Batting second, playing first base, is Hall of Famer Rod Carew. Batting third in right field is the great Tony Oliva. Batting cleanup, playing third base, is Greg Nettles. Batting fifth at shortstop is Leo Cardenas. Batting 6th in catching is John Roseboro. Batting 7th in center field is Ted Ulander. Batting 8th at second base is all-star Frank Quilici. And batting ninth is the pitcher, Dick Estelle. And I, one note, uh, I said the lineup is the same. Uh, Bruce Look started yesterday for the Twins. It's John Roseboro today. Okay, let's take a look at Marty Patton. He just suffered his eighth loss the game before the All-Star break. We brought him in as a reliever. Oh, wow, look at that. What happened? They didn't get... Oh, I know. Yeah, because he's making his 18th start. It'll be his 19th game once he throws the pitch. I was going to say that doesn't look right because we just put him in relief and he took the loss. Uh, he's 6-8 then with a 4-2-5 ERA. 50 strikeouts in 101 and two-thirds innings pitched. Opponents are batting 282 against him. You pretty much know the rest. He's rated 79 overall. 26-year-old righty goes to arbitration next season. 
Okay, let's take a look at the defense. Much better uh, in theory, but then we had four errors yesterday. So I, everyone in the infield but our shortstop, uh, uh, Pat, uh, Patek, uh, made an error. And then Tommy Agee made his seventh outfield error yesterday. So I don't know, man. It's crazy. We improve our defense uh, by a ton of it, at least ratings points. And then we completely fell apart. So we'll see how it goes today as Mike Adams will lead off against Marty Patton. 2-2 two -two count to Adams, and he strikes out. That's a good way to start the game for Patton. One down, Rod Carew up. Carew betting 330. And he's got one home run on the year. He's going to dump it into right center field. Can we catch it on the run? Yes, the right fielder, A.G., coming in, making the catch. Two quick outs for Patton, and Tony Oliva comes to the plate, and... It's a fly ball to center. Easy play. We move on to the bottom of the first. Let's do our lineup rundown for today's game. Batting leadoff. Playing second base is Gary Sutherland. Batting second in left field is Lou Pinilla. Batting third at third base is Rich Rollins. Batting cleanup playing first base is Darren Johnson. Batting 5th in right field is Tommy Ag. Batting 6th in center field is Don Bosch. Batting 7th in catching is Jerry McNerty. Batting 8th at shortstop is Freddie Patek. And batting ninth is the pitcher, Marty Patton. Take a look at Dick Estell. Uh, making his 7th start of the year. 2-2, two 5.05 two, ERA. Opponents are batting 3.06 against him. We have faced him once. Look at his log. You'll see that he got a no decision back on June 25th. Uh, he went six and two thirds, giving up five runs on nine hits, walk three. Not a good performance. We do tend to beat up on the left-handers as we um, bashed Jim Cott yesterday. There's the defense for the Twins. Behind the plate today is John Roseboro. He's got 83 rating. They are fantastic everywhere on the infield. Okay, here's Gary Sutherland leading off against Dick Estell. Ground ball to third, Nettles tossing him out. One down, Sweet Lou's up next. Lou went two for four in his first game and a base hit to right. Can he get two? Pinella coming through with a double. That's one of the reasons why we got him, this gap power of 93. Uh, we don't have anyone like that on the team. That's his 22nd total double for the season. It's the only way we can get any league leaders on this team is to trade for somebody who's already in the lead. Runner on uh, second for Rich Rollins, who I believe leads the team in doubles otherwise. He hits a high fly ball to right center. Lou will tag, take third. Good job by Lou. And that will leave it up to Darren Johnson to drive in the first run of the ball game. Johnson, one for two, two walks against Estelle in that first game. And he goes to right, come on, get down. It's gonna be caught by the right fielder, Tony Oliva. We go to the top of the second inning. Stranding the runner with Greg Nettles leading off. It's Nettles, Cardenas, and John Roseboro. Nettles strikes out. So Patton stru uh, struck out the first batter in both halves of the inning. That's kind of amazing. Normally we're giving up walks. There's a ground ball to third. Rich Rall up with it, tossing him out. Two outs for John Roseboro. 310 batting average versus righties. And he's got a home run against Pat Rollins. Once again, making a good play at the hot corner. We go to the bottom of the second inning. Tommy Ag leading it off. He's 0 for 3 against Estelle, but he had those two big bombs yesterday. Four RBI. And he strikes out lucky. He doesn't even take the bat off his shoulder. 
One out. Here's Don Bosch. Bosch pounding it right into the dirt. Shortstop Cardenas makes the play. Two outs. Here's Jerry McNerney. McNerney, like I said, is kind of his job's on the line as he pops it up on the infield. He's been so good defensively. Um, and he doesn't have a major league contract. We could actually send McNerty down to the minors, but a guy that started almost every game, I feel I would feel bad about doing that. So um, he would be our backup, I, I assume. Top of the third, and Patton striking out the leadoff guy again. Wow. Three Ks for Patton. Looking good today as Frank Quilici steps up. As I mentioned, he was in the All-Star game, starting at second base, grounding out to short. And the pitcher, Dick Estelle, sharply hit ground ball to third. That's three to Rollins in the last two innings. And we go to the bottom of the third inning. One hit between the two teams. As Patek steps up, he's been horrible. But he did have two hits yesterday. So we have to acknowledge at least occasionally he's capable of doing something. Marty Patton still does not have a hit on the season. That's, a, that's an out every time. Let's take a look at Patton's batting here. 0 for 26. I mean, we've seen worse in real life. Here's Gary Sutherland, and Sutherland walks. Okay, second base runner of the day. There's two outs, not really a hit and run situation. Pinella has the only hit so far. It was a double, and he lines a frozen rope right at the right fielder, Oliva. We go to the top of the fourth inning. Second time through the lineup, this is when things tend to get a little dicey with Patton. Mike Adams, yeah. 3-1 count. I thought he was going to walk him for a shizzle, but he said he pops it up. Here come the lefties, starting with Rod Carew. One down. 2-1 count. Carew flips it to right. That's catchable for A.G., Okay, I see what's going on here now. Tony Oliva, 242 hitter versus right. He's 3 for 13 against Patton. Flies out to center field. We got something going on here, folks. All right. Um, bottom of the fourth. Rich Rall leading off. There's a base hit into left center field. Dumps it right over the shortstop's head for a base hit. Second hit of the day for the Pilots. Darren Johnson up. We are looking for a long ball. Oh, it feels single. We get the opposite. We got the shortest possible hit. Okay, a little rally going here as Tommy Agee comes to the plate. Nobody out. Runners on first and second. Struck out the first time up. He's 0 for 4 with a walk against Estelle. Full count. He goes to right field. Get down. There we go. Rollins coming around. Oh, do we want to send him? Yes, we do. Rollins out at the plate. Oh, nuts. Oh, man. Come on. Oliva. Just a slightly above average arm. Out of curiosity, how many outfield assists does he have? Three. I mean, he's not. He's capable, I guess. All right, well, that, that feels bad. I mean, like, that feels like... If that run would have scored, I'd be like, okay, maybe we got a chance to win this game, but no, I'm not so sure. Don Bosch. Yeah, and do a double play. Well, that's all you need to know about the game right there. This is not going to go well this inning. We go to the fifth. We leave a runner stranded, and Greg Nettles will lead off. Yeah, I mean, 
There was no doubt that after that happened, uh, this game was over. And Nettles hits his eighth home run of the season. There goes the no-hitter, the shutout, and the victory. All in one shot. Now, there's no drama. It's just a push-button game. Ulander gets a hit. Steals second base. Quilici, a comebacker to Patton. Yeah, makes the play. That felt like a throw, throw to, and he wouldn't steal second base for no reason. So I was thinking there was going to be an error on Patton there. But Twins get the lead. It's one nothing. McNerty walks. Patek flips it down the left field line. What? McNerty gets the third. No outs and only a one-run lead with the pitcher up, and they're not playing in. Let's uh, do a suicide squeeze with the catcher on third. This is a dumb idea. This would never happen in real life. They would never put the squeeze on with the catcher on third, but we'll do it anyway. Um, what we probably should do is have Patek steal second. And get two runners in a scoring position. But whatever. This game's never heard of baseball. There we go. We tied it up. That, that feels cheap, right? I mean, I, I, don't, I don't like that any more than you do. Uh, but Patek does advance. Give uh, an RBI to Patton. And we've got another runner in scoring position with some speed this time. Sutherland already walked once. He walks again. He does find a way to get on base. It is now first and second, one out. What's the percentage of Patek stealing third? Decent. I think we, we can't take the bat out of Pinella's hands. He's betting 350. Let's see if he can do something with it. Oh, he does! Welcome to the Pilots! Pinella, three run home run into left field. It's four to one, <laughs> Seattle. All right, well, we got those runs back and more. We'll take it. Estelle jams Rollins for the second out. And D-Ron strikes out. Okay, so... We're going to send Patton back out. He's got the pitcher, a righty, and then the lefties come up. If he can get the first two guys out, I'll let him pitch to Carew. If not, we're definitely bringing in a lefty. And remember, we only got one lefty in the pen. That's Riddleberger. So, here we go. Uh, Yeah, here we go. Full count. Come on, don't walk the pitcher. Thank you. Shouldn't say this, but Patton hasn't walked anybody, which is something that he's accustomed to early on in the year. But then he starts walking two per game. And uh, Adams has got a great eye, so this would be the first guy to walk. Yeah. I mean, that was like, it's so obvious. So that's it for Patton. Uh, I mean, this game is so predictable. We're going to bring in Denny Riddleberger. How do you like your burger? Riddled with maggots? I don't know what. I don't know what. But uh, Bad cow disease. This is his eighth appearance. And you can see not a lot going on. But he's given a, uh, two runs. And that was on a home run. So there you have it. Rod Carew. Only betting 235 versus fellow lefties. Comebacker to Riddleberger. Get the lead. Uh, no, he's too fast. Only play was to first. That will bring up Tony Oliva. 241 hitter versus lefties. 2-2 two -two count. And he strikes out on that curveball. Great job by the Riddleberger. We go to the bottom of the sixth. 
I think his nickname's got to be the Riddler, right? I mean, who agrees? The Riddler. I don't know why it took me nine, uh, nine appearances for him to figure that out. I don't know what the hell you guys are doing out there either. You should get on top of that shit. Here we go, Tommy A.G. Line drive to the left. Oh, it might be a triple. It won't. It's going to be just a double. Wow, A.G.'s in fuego. Seventh double of the season to go with three trips and 15 quadruples. All right. So leadoff man in scoring position for Don Bosch. Bosch had a couple of hits yesterday, but well, he's kind of fallen out of favor. He is getting back-to-back -back starts, so there we go. Base hit down the right field line. A double and an error on Oliva. So dumb. So, so dumb. His seventh double. Can McNertney get an RBI here? There's nobody out. We're up five. Let him take a cut. 1-1 one, one count to McNerty. There we go. That'll get the run in. 6-1. to one. Good job by McNerty. I believe that is his 40th RBI. I am way off. I'm, he's only got 37. That doesn't seem right. It is. Okay. <clears throat> Bases are clear now for Freddy Podtech. Let's get something new going. We're up 5. Podtech. Grounds out to second. And, yeah, we I think Riddleberger's going to bat. Uh, because we do still have lefties coming up. We need to get one more inning out of them. Riddleberger's first appearance at the plate all season. And he <laughs> gets jammed. But at least he gets, you know, his bat on the ball. That's something. And he'll go back out on the mound. We're up five now. If Riddleberger can get us one more inning, that would be nice. Greg Nettles, base hit, of course. Let's take a look at the in-game stats here. We've only given up <coughs> three hits. Nettles has two of them. Here's a Cardenas. This feels ominous. He's the only righty here. That's going to be an error. Oh, no. Wow, Cardenas dumps it in front of the home plate, and McNerdy makes a good play. All right. Well, if we give up a run, we give up a run, but that was a good play. That prevents a huge rally from happening. Riddleberger gets another strikeout of uh, John Roseboro, and that will leave it up to Ted Ulander, 280 hitter versus lefties. And there's your base hit. So, Nettles will score. It is... Oh! Nettles holds up! Well, how is he not scoring on a base hit behind him up the middle? He's got no reason to not run. I mean, that is stupid. That is so, so dumb. The only thing is if, like, Frank Quilici hits a three-run home run, even though he's got zero power. There's a ground ball to second. Sutherland making the play. We go to the bottom of the seventh inning. Here is Jerry Kreider. We saw him yesterday. How did he do? How do you do? He did uh, okay. He had two innings pitched, gave up two hits, struck out a guy. Uh, and we saw him back on July 3rd, and he gave up three runs. It was a home run. So... We've had some luck. And Gary Sutherland leads off the inning. Ground out to short. That was called a hard curve. Here's today's hero. It's Lou Pinella. He had that big home run earlier. He's two for three. Give him another hit. We like Lou Pinella a lot. I mean, we haven't been able to play Hegan, which I don't like. Uh, but, you know, we'll, we'll take Pinella. Here's Rich Rall. 
popping it up. Higgin will be the first player off the bench if we get to that. And Darren Johnson flying out to left. Okay, we are going to the top of the eighth inning. They are bringing a pinch hitter, and they're bringing <laughs> a Hall of Famer pinch hitter. Harmon Killebrew. We're taking out Riddleberger. He gave us two very good innings. It's time for Skippy to come in. Skippy's going to be our setup man today for Diego Segui. Um, since we don't have Mike Marshall. We're up five runs. It's not a safe situation, but it could be in two innings. Killebrew. Ground ball to first. One out. Mike Adams up next. Full count to Adams. Oh, he paints the corner. Look at that. That was a full count. That was a pitch he should not have been taking. Two quick outs, and now the lefties are coming up. One-two count to Carew. And a base hit into center field. Five hits now for the Twins. Tony Oliva up with a ground ball to short. Patek throws him out. We are going to the bottom of the eighth inning. It is Bob Gebbard. We just saw him yesterday, too. They're going right back to the well. He's got a lot of ugly-looking numbers there. Let's make him a little uglier. Ground ball to his second. One out. Here's Bosch. Wow. Striking out Bosch. And McNerty. Ground ball to third. Oh, an error by the third baseman. Nettles, McNerty. So are they going to walk Patek to get to the pitcher spot? Why do they always do that? There we go. Ground ball to third. Okay, well, I guess we could send Skippy back out there, but uh, you know me. I don't like sending him out for a second inning. Um, we don't, we're up five. We don't actually have to bring in Sigi. We can bring in Pedro Ramos for a junk inning. And since Sigi's thrown 46 uh, innings so far, the most of any of our relievers, maybe we bring in Pedro Ramos. Okay, <coughs> Ramos into the game. Nettles two for three today. And a dong. Liner to left. Come on! It falls in for a hit. Oh, this has got a junk inning feel to it, doesn't it? Full count. And another base hit. Yeah. And now the lefties. There's nothing we can do. I mean, it's just a push-button game. Ground ball to first. We'll give up a run for a double play. Oh, Thing we could do. They're going to get their four runs and then we'll win. Why would you launder be running? That is so stupid. It would never happen. Pilots win six to four. Handshakes, butt slaps, and lappy sticks. I can't even enjoy winning. I can't even enjoy it. I want to, but I can't. All right, we're two games over 500. You know what that means. Losses are coming. Um, I mean, our team batting average is still 229. At least we're hitting a couple home runs a game. You know, that feels good. Our ERA is almost below four. Those errors are, you know, they're not hurting our ERA. They're all unearned runs. So 
you know, I feel good about that at least. I guess the runs have to score somehow. Padres still sitting on 24 wins. Headline news. Brainiac Baseball, Daily Beat. Athletics and Reynolds beat Tigers. Tommy Reynolds had a home run. Gene Tennis, did he get a home run? No, he didn't. Uh, two doubles, though. And then they just recap exactly what they wrote right there. Phillies win on Bell's no-hitter. Oh, Gary Bell threw a no-hitter. Our opening day pitcher pitched a no-hitter for the Phils. The Fightins. Oh, my gosh. That's amazing. Now it was against another expansion team, the Montreal Expos. Um, wow. That's awesome. That's great. Um, let's look at the box score. I'll pull that up real quick. Look at that. Wait, did he walk anybody? He did walk three. And there was an error. So, uh, Well, good for him. Great job for him. He is 9-5 and five on the year. He is 7-2 and two since being traded with an even better ERA. So he's got to feel good about being there. Okay. Good job for him. That's our third no-hitter of the year already. Minnesota loses 6-4, to four, drops from first. Ironic that our hometown newspaper's headline, not Seattle wins, but it's Minnesota loses. Uh, Seattle's number two hitter, Lou Pinella, had the home run. He's our player of the game. Um, and uh, good for Marty Patton getting the win there. Transactions. Uh, so there's Gary Bell's no-hitter. Take another look. Good job by him. Three complete games for the Phils. Mini Aroha retires. Okay. And then a couple of injuries. Jim Colborn for the Cubbies, minor leaguer, out for the season. Barry Raziano of the Royals with cheese. Out for a couple of months. No big deal. Okay, let's pull up the box score and get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. Like and or subscribe to the channel. Player of the game is Sweet Lou Pinella. Three for four. Three ribbies. A, a very solid ball game. I'm liking him a lot at this point. He had the double. He had the home run, which we did not expect a lot of from him. Marty Patton uh, gets the win. As I said, he's 7-8. Second on the team in wins. Riddleberger, the Riddler, we're going to call him from now on, I guess, obviously, is uh, pitches a good, does a good job. Lockwood does a good gerb. Pedro Ramos, I mean, he had to bend over and take it. There was nothing we could do to stop it. Uh, especially after the first baseman, Johnson, makes an error. Uh, Dick Estell takes the loss. He's 2-3 and three on the year. Wow, a terrible game from him, uh, it, you know, big picture-wise. So, Okay, that's going to do it. We're going to come back tomorrow with Game 3 of the three-game series. Until then, everyone have a great day.